Harmony has always been a major part of my life. Even before I knew exactly how it worked, I was immersed in it. Growing up in a musical family, I rarely heard a melody sung without someone humming a harmony part. As I've grown older, I've been introduced to a greater variety of harmony. My education has opened up doors to understanding the whys of the harmony I instinctively have always used. Now I am constantly listening and experimenting to discover and create new techniques. My senior recital showcased many different harmonic devices, both laterally and vertically, in a variety of genres including classical, folk, and pop. The first piece I'd like to look at is a piece I wrote called Lauren's Song. This piece is very uh, classical in its sound, and it's for solo violin with string quintet and piano. It features a few different places that I think are noteworthy. The first is the exploration of tertiary relationships, which is just a fancy way of saying major and minor thirds, between chords and keys. You hear this a lot in film music. I'm going to pull up the score here, and um, starting on measure 141 is the section I'm going to be talking about. At this point in the piece, I've been in the key of D minor for a little while, and I really needed to change the tonality of it just so D doesn't get um, too boring. Now, my problem was I had already written my next theme, and it was in D minor as well, and there's really no way I could change it just because of the tessitura of the instruments and probably because I was lazy. But because I was lazy, this next part came about, so it just goes to show. Laziness pays off. Anyways, um... I used this tertiary movement technique to destroy any sense of tonality so that it bridges the gap between both of the D minors, but when you land in the next D minor, hopefully it feels fresh. Another technique of note in Lauren's song is seen at the end of measure 276. I discovered these chords while at the musical Wicked. They consist of a harmonic progression of three chords, flat 7, 4 to 1. This is one of the most common harmonic progressions of all time. However, uh, what makes this progression interesting is the addition of this altered bass line. It's very prevalent in black gospel too, I think. The bass line is pretty unique because it plays the extensions of the chords. Uh, for the flat 7, it plays the major 7th. For the 4, it plays the 13th or the 6th. And for the 1, it just plays the root. Altogether, it sounds like this. I employ this in my piece at the very end. And we'll look at that in a second. The last technique that I'd like to look at in Lauren's song is that of layering thematic lines on top of each other. This type of counterpoint is particularly effective towards the ends of pieces. I first encountered this approach when I was in the musical Les Mis in high school. If you're familiar with the song One Day More, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This song takes all the themes from the first half of the show and puts them into one song. In Lauren's song, there are five different themes. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. The third, the fourth, and the fifth. In measure 244, I begin my ending by combining the third and fifth themes. A few measures later, I add the fourth theme. After a buildup, I finish by combining an ostinato of the most prevalent rhythm of the piece with snippets of the second and fourth themes in the solo violin. 
After all this comes to a sudden stop in measure 275, the solo violin plays the first theme in an ascending sequence, which leads to, wow, that is the hardest thing I've ever said in my life, ascending sequence, which leads to those chords I was talking about earlier. 